Hi everyone, Grant for the Flame Learning Channel. In this video, you'll learn how to use the new Cryptomat node in Flame 2020. To give you a bit of background on this tool, the Cryptomat data pass was created by some very clever people at SIOP and it allows you to automatically generate a variety of mats even after the CGI has been rendered. It's not an image pass that is filled with colors like an RGBA mat pass. Instead, it contains actual metadata for each object in the CG render. The other big advantage is that the CryptoMat takes into account transparency, motion blur and depth of field. This makes the mat generation even more practical when it comes to compositing, look development and grading. If you'd like to follow along, please click the link in the description below to download the zip file. Alternatively, if you're watching the podcast, then please type the link displayed in your web browser. Starting off in a new batch group, use the import node to navigate to the downloaded files and import them as source clips into batch. These are single frame files, but everything you're about to see and do will apply to an image sequence. Now one source clip is the beauty pass, and this is the scene of a giant robot toys chasing a couple of spaceships. Transparency and depth of field was included as part of the original render. The other source clip in batch is the corresponding Cryptomat data pass. Please note that the Cryptomat needs to be 32 bit which is indicated under the source clip. If you press Shift C to expand the source clip, you will see that it consists of multiple data channels and you need to use all of them with the Cryptomat node. As a side point, it's worth mentioning that this example was created in Maya and rendered with Arnold using the Cryptomat AOVs. Many different render engines now support Cryptomat so your choice of preferred renderer should not limit you to using them in Flame or Flare. Now you can leave the node expanded or press Shift C to collapse it. Go to the batch node bin and locate the Cryptomat node. Drag it out into the batch schematic. Looking closely at the node, it has 7 inputs and 5 outputs. All 7 inputs need to be connected and this will give you the ability to output 4 different mats per node. So firstly, connect the beauty pass source clip into the first red input of the Cryptomat node. Next, connect each of the Cryptomat passes with their alphas into the remaining red and blue inputs. Double click on the Cryptomat node for its controls and press F4 for the result view. Now the Cryptomat tools are very straightforward. You basically add objects into the table and mats are generated from that. For example, you click add for the picker and choose any object on screen that you would like a mat for. You are actually picking the data and not a colour. As an extra tip, if you click add and then hold control, you can click and drag the picker across the image and this will add multiple objects to the table. So using a Cryptomat pass gives you accurate results and the RGBA values should not cause any issues. To the right of the table, you will get an overlay to see what object you are picking. You can adjust the overlay transparency and you can also set the colour of the select object in the list using the colour picker. If you want to reassign the selection to another object, click the replace button and choose the centre robot's chest. Now with this object, you can see the output is set to all. This means if you toggle through the format outputs with F4, you will see this object in all the mat outputs. You can disable the overlay if you wish to see the full mat. If you click the output pull down menu, you can assign this object to all or individual outputs. So if you set the output to 1 and then you click on the viewing pull down menu and also set the cryptomat result to outmat 1, you will see the mat. 
If you toggle all the outmats with F4, this object will only be available in outmat 1. Now toggle to the result view and let's add a few more objects. I'll add the other robot's chests as two separate objects and assign them to outmat 1. Next, I'll add the floor as an object as well as the sky as an object. These two will be assigned to output 2. Now there is the ability to reorder the objects in the list, but I'd like to point out that this has no bearing on the mats produced. This is simply a convenience option to organize the objects in the table. Now if you toggle to the first out mat, there are the robot's mats, and if you toggle to the second out mat, there is the isolation of the sky and the ground. So the Cryptomat node takes all this extra data and allows you to create whatever mats you need for any VFX or look development. As I said, this data takes into account transparencies, motion blur and depth of field blurring. So you can now take these mat outputs and use them anywhere. For example, go back to batch and drag out an image node. Connect the beauty pass into the image node. Select the image node and press Ctrl N twice for two image inputs. Connect the first out mat into the first media input and connect the second out mat into the second media input. Go into the image node and press ALT 2 for a 2 up view. Display the manager on the left with the 8 keyboard shortcut and load the result view into the right viewport. In this case, you'll use selectives to grade through the mats. But like I said, the mats can be used for any VFX or finishing tasks. Choose Selective 1 and through the selective controls, choose to use Mat 1 which is the chest of the robots. Set the mode to Luminance. Using the Master Grade, you can change the colour to whatever you want. Add a second selective to the image and use Mat 2 as the isolation. This was the combination of the floor and the sky mats. Remember to choose luminance if the mat was connected to the red input of the media node in batch. Using the master grade again, you can play around with any property to tweak the look of the sky and the ground. So that's how you can use Cryptomat data passes in Flame and extract any combination mat you require for any VFX grading or finishing task. Don't forget to check out the other features, workflows and enhancements to Flame 2020. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel for future videos and thanks for watching.